I'm going to show you how to run a parallel analysis to determine the minimum amount of new factors you should keep from a factor analysis. So in this little example here, we have 49 different questions, okay? So it means 49 items. And let's figure out how many people actually took this test. So we got 156 participants and 49 questions, items, variables. Okay, so that's where the, what I would do first is I'd probably just run a regular exploratory factor analysis using principal component analysis. Hold on one second, please. You're going to go to analyze dimension reduction factor. And what do you know? We have all 49 already in there already. Isn't that nice? So I'm just going to click my regular buttons, descriptives. Yep, I always want those. Extraction. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, rotation. We normally go very max here. Scores. We're going to keep them as new ones. Sure, why not? And options. We're going to use 0.4 as a minimum loading, right? And we're going to put them in the right order. And any missing data, we're going to replace with the mean. Okay, so this one, if it's missing any any single piece of data, it will not use that entire row, and we're not going to do that. We're just going to replace the missing ones with the means. And, and we don't have very many missing ones, so that's not going to be an issue. Continue. Okay. Showtime. All right, here's the results from a regular principal component analysis uh, factor analysis. Okay, so descriptives, don't care. Correlation table, too big, don't care. Um, our determinant is close to zero, but it's not zero, so that's a good move, right? It didn't violate anything. Your KMO says your sample size is fine. Your Bartlett's test of sphericity is significant, therefore you should continue. And there's your extractions, but we're not really looking for that. So according to this... Your any eigenvalue, we're using the Kaiser um, criteria that basically says any eigenvalue that's greater than one, you should probably use. So according to this, out of our 49 questions, we could possibly get a 15 new factors. That's a lot. Uh, and then, you know, I would probably add this one in because it's right next to one. And it adds another 2 or 3% to your overall cumulative explaining power. So 15 or 16 new questions out of your 49. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. The, the, the main reason we do factor analysis is to reduce the number of items, questions from a survey. Because each question, each item is its own variable. And you really don't want to be messing with 49 variables in this case or even down to 15 or 16 in this case. That's way too many variables. So we're going to run a parallel analysis to, to find a, uh, a better fit to how many new factors we should have using 49 of these, of these new items with a sample size of 156. Okay, so hold on. So I came across this syntax that was created by this brilliant person, uh, O'Connor, from the UBCO psychology, I'm not sure what that stands for, but it's probably a college or something. So he, he, he basically did a lot of coding that's going to allow us to run a parallel analysis in SPSS. So I'm going to put the link to this web page um, somewhere on the site, so it'll be here so you can go there too. But we're going to go to parallel SPSS, or SPS, and it's going to give us a code, right? And what I suggest you do is cut and paste the whole thing and put it into a, I always use notepad. Notepad is my favorite friend there. And I'm going to get a new one. Hold on. So I'm going to take this code and I'm just going to cut as cut and paste as is. Make sure I got the whole thing. So there it is. There's this code on a notepad. I'm going to save it and also put this on the website. But let's let's show you how to work this, okay? Hold on. All right, back to SPSS. I'm going to go to File, New. I'm going to open up a blank syntax page. It's going to look like that. 
I'm going to I'm going to go back to my secret code here, the one that I just cut and pasted. I'm going to click control A. And I got it all, so I'm going to copy copy and then I'm going to paste it into the syntax box, paste. And there it is. It's almost ready to go. We're almost done, believe it or not. So this this top part up here, parallel analysis program, right? If it has an asterisk in front of it, that means the computer's going to skip over it. So that's the easy part. So in cases, that is your sample size. So our sample size was 156. Just replace the numbers. Be very careful. Don't erase any dots or anything. And our number of variables was our, how many questions, how many items we had? We had 49, okay? And right underneath it, it says, specify the desired kind of parallel analysis. And I we're just going to use number one, principal component analysis. That's the one I'm used to. Principal axis, I, I've used that before, but we don't use it a lot around here. So we're just going to use the regular PCA. I'm going to click one. And again, I'm going to highlight the whole thing. And hit the little green go button. And it's going to calculate. These are randomly generated eigenvalues. In other words, it takes all the data at random and it does its magic mathematics on it. But at, at random, these are the randomly generated eigenvalues. Now, we're going to compare those to the ones we just did up here. And I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, again, we're going to compare... This is from the regular uh, principal component analysis, factor analysis. And this is the one where we just did the magic. This is parallel analysis. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste these things side to side to, so we can see how they work. Okay, column in the left. This is the factor analysis output that told us to use either 15 or 16 of them of the new factors and that's way too many and this is the randomly generated so this is how we're going to tell we're going to use this means column this one right here and compare it to the total eigenvalue column so when these means values are less than the total eigenvalue we're going to use that new factor so in other words factor number one the eigenvalue is 9.2 the mean is 2.2 so we're going to use this one this one's 2.9, 2.15. So this one's less than that one. We're going to use number two. We're going to use number three because 2.04 is less than 0.206. I'm just going to go down the line. Yes, four. Yes, five. 1.92 and 1.79. Yep, this one's still less than. So we're going to use six. I got 1.726, 1.729. So yes, this is still good. So I'm going to use seven. Number eight, it says 1.652. This says 1.66. Uh-oh. So on eigenvalue number eight, this number is less than this number, so we're not going to use it. So according to this system, this parallel analysis, we should probably shoot for seven new factors only, not 15 or 16. But according to the parallel analysis, we should be using looking for seven new factors. That's how it works MGZ out.